Okay. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on information theoretic cryptography. Um, I suppose this is the session on uh, quantum information theoretic cryptography. Um, so we have two uh, exciting uh, talks today. Um, and I guess as a quick reminder, uh, so this is now Cosmos 1 and 2. Uh, Cosmos 2 is Cosmos, well, yeah, Cos Cosmos 3 is uh, hosting what's formerly Cosmos 3, and then Cosmos 3 is closed. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the correct room for, uh, for information theoretic uh, security. Um, okay, uh, so the first uh, talk today is online extractability in the quantum random oracle model. Uh, this is uh, work by uh, Yeli Don, Serge Fair, uh, Christian Mayens, and uh, Christian Schaffner, and uh, Yeli will give the, uh, the talk. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, online extractability. Uh, to get on the same page, let's first uh, do a quick recap of what uh, extraction is and where we find it in cryptography. We find it in a context where some uh, algorithm A sends messages that depend on some secret S. And in an honest execution, uh, S indeed remains secret, uh, but there uh, exists an extractor algorithm that given some kind of enhanced access to the algorithm, uh, I'll explain uh, later on a bit more what this enhanced access is, uh, can then recover the secret S. Uh, some examples, uh, probably the most well-known example is that of zero knowledge proofs of knowledge, like the Sigma protocol that you see here. It's a three round interactive scheme that allows some prover Alice to uh, prove her knowledge of a secret witness W for an NP relation to uh, the verifier Bob. Uh, and indeed, the zero knowledge property ensures that the witness remains W, uh, yet the, the very definition of a proof of knowledge requires the existence of such an extractor that by interacting with Alice uh, can uh, recover the secret witness W. Another obvious example is, uh, of course, extractable commitments. Uh, perhaps a bit less obvious is the use of extractors in proving CCA security. Uh, they come into play in uh, simulating the decryption oracle, which the reduction needs to do in such a proof. Uh, namely, for every query that the adversary makes to the uh, decryption oracle, this ciphertext uh, uh, has to be Sorry, the corresponding plain text to that ciphertext has to be extracted uh, somehow without using the secret key. Uh, so we need an extractor for that as well. Uh, then there are different uh, kinds of extraction. Uh, two important properties for extractability are uh, a so-called straight line extractor, uh, which means that the extractor only needs to uh, run the adversary once instead of rewinding it, going back and forth, uh, executing it multiple times. Uh, and indeed, the straight line extraction is the preferable option uh, because usually it leads to a better loss factor since, well, we, we don't need to rely on the adversary succeeding multiple times uh, and uh, uh, also better run time. I guess that's, that's self-evident. Uh, another important property is on the fly. Uh, so whether the extraction happens during the execution or only after the adversary has produced its final output. Um, in particular, uh, if we want an on-the-fly extractor, it's important that the extraction that we do does not disturb the view of the adversary, since we want it to be able to still continue and produce the same output as before. Uh, and this is indeed the, the kind of extraction that we need in this example of uh, proving CCA security. Uh, then if, if a protocol allows for an extractor that satisfies both these properties, uh, we call it online extractable. Uh, okay, so a bit more about this enhanced access. Uh, again, a few different flavors. I've already mentioned the uh, rewinding. Uh, that's something you often find in uh, proofs of knowledge or in 
proving the zero knowledge property. Uh, another one uh, example of enhanced access that we can give to the extractor is uh, giving it some trapdoor information. This one you find often in, uh, uh, for example, extractable commitments. Uh, and then there's the random oracle model for particles that have some uh, application of uh, a hash function that we can then model as an uh, idealized uh, random oracle, uh, which the adversary has to query and therefore we can uh, give the extractor uh, read access to the queries that the uh, algorithm makes and it's also allowed to uh, reprogram the random oracle. Uh, <coughs> this, uh, th this method for extraction we can use in, uh, for example, hash-based commitments, commit an open protocol, so I'll also talk about a bit more later on, uh, and again this CCA security uh, example. Uh, and indeed, this is the, 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 the kind of extraction that we, that we are interested in in this work, because of course we want to ask the question, can we do the same in the quantum random oracle model? Uh, to answer the question, let's first look at a, a simple example of extraction in the classical random oracle model. Uh, a hash-based uh, commitment, uh, that means that uh, some algorithm can com commit to a secret S, by uh, evaluating the random oracle on an input X, where X consists of this secret uh, concatenated with some random string. Uh, and then with this uh, read access that we allow the extractor to the algorithm's queries, um, we can do the following uh, method for extraction. Uh, very simple, uh, the algorithm just writes down every query in a so-called query transcript, and then after this uh, commitment C has been output by the algorithm, uh, the extractor can just look through this uh, uh, query transcript, uh, and then uh, at least intuitively, if uh, the adversary is able to open the commitment, then there must be some X prime in the transcript that evaluates to C, because otherwise he wouldn't know uh, the right preimage. Uh, and if he can furthermore open it to reveal the secret S, then also this X prime must be equal to, uh, to the X uh, that he will output later in, in uh, opening to the secret. Uh, so that's all pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, but then we go to the quantum setting and then uh, things kind of break down. Uh, because in the quantum random oracle model, uh, the uh, algorithm is allowed to make superposition queries to the oracle. Uh, and in particular, uh, because of something called the no cloning theorem, uh, which says that uh, an unknown quantum state cannot be copied, uh, it's no longer possible to uh, just write down every query that the algorithm makes. So there no longer exists such a thing as uh, a query transcript. Uh, however, in 2019, uh, Mark Sandry introduced the uh, compressed oracle technique, uh, which in a sense is meant to, to overcome this very problem. Uh, what it does, it, it, it gives a method to simulate the random oracle uh, in such a way that we get access to uh, an internal quantum state of the simulator uh, that does contain some information on the interaction that has taken place between the algorithm and the simulator. Uh, it's not the case that this uh, quantum state now functions as a quantum version of a query transcript where we can just look up all the queries that the algorithm made because, yeah, that's what I already explained, that's not possible. Uh, I like to think of it more as the queries of the algorithm leaving some kind of footprint in this quantum state that we can then uh, investigate to deduce at least some information on uh, what the oracle, oh, sorry, what the algorithm has and has not learned about the values of the oracle. Uh, but in order to do so, we have to measure this quantum state. And as you may know, in general, measuring a quantum state can uh, disturb the state, uh, which is something we want to avoid for our online extractability purposes. Because again, yeah, we want to be able uh, to continue the run of the adversary after doing the extraction. Uh, and in particular, 
due to this interaction that has happened between the algorithm and the simulator, uh, their internal states have become entangled, which means that disturbing the uh, oracle state may in turn also disturb the, the view of the adversary. Uh, and that's, that's also the reason that this uh, compressed oracle technique so far in previous literature has mostly been used in cases where it's okay to do the measurement only at the very end of the run. Uh, there have been some cases where it was applied on the fly, but then uh, it was either with some measurement that had a deterministic outcome, which means that the measurement does not disturb the, uh, the quantum state, uh, or uh, it was just acceptable to uh, have some polynomial loss, uh, which again, in our case, is not acceptable because we uh, need to uh, not disturb the view of the adversary uh, at all. Uh, so that has been indeed the technical core of our result, to try to bound the disturbance of some uh, suitable extraction measurement. Uh, and we do so by bounding the norm of a certain commutator, namely of that measurement and uh, a unitary O, which describes the evolution of the compressed oracle for uh, a single uh, query, for a single call to the oracle. Uh, and we have a bound that is uh, negligible in the output size of the oracle, uh, which means that, uh, at least in the analysis, we are free to move this measurement around. So the extractor actually does the measurement at runtime, but then in analyzing the behavior of the adversary, we are free to just uh, commute it with all the oracle queries. And since the measurement is only on the site of the uh, of the oracle it also commutes with the local computation that the adversary does uh, so we can just push it towards the end and then of course uh, introducing a measurement at the end uh, does not affect the view of the adversary because he's done gone home uh, hence uh, we can conclude that the adversary does not notice our measurement uh, that then in turn uh, allows us to uh, present our main result uh, we apply this technical lemma to show the existence of uh, a simulator that simulates the random oracle. So it has uh, 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 both a random oracle interface uh, and additionally uh, some extraction interface, such that for uh, every bounded query algorithm A, we have the following picture. Uh, A is allowed to query this random oracle interface. Uh, then at some point uh, put a commitment C on the table, uh, continue to run, do more queries, uh, but as soon as uh, the C has been output, the reduction can then uh, enter it, query it to this extraction interface, and the simulator will do some internal quantum measurement, uh, produce a guess X prime for uh, guessing what's inside the commitment, and then our theorem gives the following promise. Uh, if at some later point uh, the adversary uh, outputs X, which is prom promised to be the opening for the commitment C, uh, then uh, with high probability, either uh, this X is equal to our guess X prime, or else X is not an opening to C at all. Uh, so indeed, we see that we uh, managed to preserve the intuition uh, that we had in the, in the classical random oracle. Uh, now, this, this is in fact just a, a simple example for the purpose uh, of the, the, the current talk. Uh, our result is uh, slightly more general. Uh, namely, we proved that this uh, extraction method works for uh, any function, uh, any arbitrary fixed function f, where uh, if the adversary outputs some value t with the promise that it's uh, the result of applying f to uh, x and h of x and additionally uh, this function has the property that for every x and t there are not too many y's uh, such that uh, f maps x and y to this particular t um, then uh, yeah again intuitively uh, this f has a similar kind of binding property as this original uh, commitment uh, example uh, and so our uh, extraction method uh, uh, works uh, works here as well. Uh, that's the main theorem of our work. Uh, we go on to uh, uh, apply it. 
uh, in two uh, additional use cases. The first one being these uh, commit and open protocols. Uh, it's a, a particular kind of subclass of Sigma protocols where the first method consists of a number of hash based commitments. And then the random challenge by the verifier just asks to uh, open a random subset of those. Uh, for this class of Sigma protocols, we can now show tight online extractability. Uh, and in particular, we don't need uh, uh, special properties like collapsingness or unique responses that previous techniques required to do the extraction. Uh, and also these previous techniques uh, incurred a loss uh, yeah, I should say, say at least the cubic loss, because in fact it's uh, the success probability of the adversary with an exponent 2k plus 1 for k special sound uh, protocols, so cubic for two special sound protocols. Uh, and uh, our, our uh, reduction, as I said, is tight, so we have no loss at all. Uh, these uh, CNO protocols, they are used in uh, the popular uh, MPC in the head paradigm. Uh, one example of which is the uh, candidate picnic in the ever ongoing uh, NIST competition. Um, though there's a caveat that uh, our current result actually applies to the, just the interactive protocol that underlies this signature scheme. Uh, picnic uses the fiat Shamir transformed uh, so non-interactive version uh, for which the current work is not sufficient uh, but we do have a follow-up work uh, appearing at this year's crypto uh, where we can also for this non-interactive version uh, prove tight online extractability uh, and then the other application that we give in the paper is to the fujisaki okamoto transform uh, we have the first uh, complete uh, post-quantum security proof of the so-called textbook FO transform. Uh, there have been many, many papers on post-quantum uh, uh, Fujisaki Okamoto, um, <clears throat> but they all uh, up to now uh, had to introduce some uh, alteration, some addition to the original transform in order for the, uh, for the proof to go through, uh, such as uh, the session key being derived as uh, uh, H of M and C instead of just M. Uh, there was this additional key confirmation hash, which also increased the size of the ciphertext. Um, and furthermore, our reduction works uh, with explicit rejection as well as implicit rejection. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, this FO transform also uh, features prominently in the NIST competition on the CAM site. So uh, summarizing, uh, we are now able to lift uh, a powerful extraction method from the classical random oracle model to the quantum random oracle model, uh, which works straight line and on the fly. Uh, we use it to give a tight reduction of uh, commit and open protocols in the QROM and uh, uh, a an post-quantum analysis of textbook FO. And I guess the main message of this talk should be uh, the next time you run into an adversary that outputs some T with the promise that uh, he can output X such that F of X and H of X equals T, uh, give us a call and we can uh, extract it online. Thank you. All right, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Uh, as a reminder, if you have a question, uh, please come to the microphone so uh, um, people attending on Zoom can hear you. Because it's not a general. Right, like there is no general quantum. Um, all applications, it's only for some specific applications like commitment and then Fujisaki Okamoto. So maybe two questions, like, do you think that there is any hope of like some construction that emulates an oracle that would be useful, you know, that could be used generically for, for whatever application, like through, like, let's say, Feistel transform or something of the sort? And that's one question. And is this <coughs> other like a common usage of random oracles for Fiat Shamir, non-interactive zero knowledge proofs? So, did you look at that application or, or do you know if other people did or what do you think the hopefulness of of uh, that being quantum secure yeah 
Uh, yeah, so the first question, uh, the current technique, it works uh, in any situation where uh, there is some form of commitment, even this, this generalized form that I showed with the function f. Uh, so I think in that sense, we, we do achieve more or less the same uh, as can be done in the classical random oracle, whenever the, 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 the classical RAM proof requires us to uh, look at the transcript to, uh, to extract some pre-image. Uh, of course, that doesn't cover like all, uh, all uh, classical random oracle model proofs, uh, but at least those where there is such a, a hash-based commitment present. Uh, and the second question for Fiat Shamir, uh, yes, there are uh, uh, there, there are uh, uh, previous works that prove security uh, of Fiat Shamir in the QRAM, uh, albeit at uh, a loss quadratic in the number of queries that the adversary makes. Uh, and furthermore, in this follow-up work that we have, uh, that's also about uh, the non-interactive non Fiat Shamir transformed version of these CNO protocols. Uh, and there we uh, can actually prove a tight security reduction, so without the square loss in the number of queries. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, question. Uh, with this technique, can you also program the random oracle? Um, with like, this technique, uh, no, no, it doesn't, doesn't really. No, no, no. So you don't need for the result, but my question was more, can you apply the result uh, if, uh, I don't know, in another scenario where you need to program the Oracle? You mean whether it's sort of compatible with the situation exactly. where, you, where you have to reprogram? Uh, well, yeah, uh, we show that uh, our extraction measurement, uh, uh, it, it does disturb the state of the Oracle, but not the view of the adversary. Uh, so in that sense, I think that, uh, uh, yeah, that that it wouldn't sort of interfere with with, with some other uh, reprogramming techniques. So my guess is yes. Okay, thank you. All right, I guess I had uh, one question of my own. Uh, so you had this uh, general condition for this function f, uh, which uh, I guess introduces some constraints, which allows for online extraction. Um, I was curious whether f has to be completely independent of the random oracle, or can f in some ways depend on the random oracle? Uh, so I'm thinking, for example, of a case where um, maybe we have h of h of x and we want to extract the, uh, um, the original pre-image. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, at least in our theorem, it has to be an arbitrary fixed function, so uh, not depend on h. Uh, yeah, I guess intuitively, intuitively, as long as there is this, this sort of binding quality, that, that's what, what matters, that, uh, that if you see some T, then it's very hard to, uh, uh, sorry, if you see some T that has been produced by evaluating X, uh, by evaluating F on X and H of X, then it should be really hard to find uh, an, a different X prime that also, uh, together with H of X prime, maps to the same T. Uh, that's that's sort of the the important quality. So as long as that is guaranteed, uh, the result result should still go through. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, um, looks like uh, um, there's no more questions. So let's uh, thank the speaker and. Uh...